guest today is president of the American Community Schools of Athens, Dr. Stefanos Yalamas. He has been a professor, department chair, a dean, a provost, a president, and an educational consultant since 1990. His professional work includes research and leadership development, faculty development, innovative approaches in teaching, and learning. As a result, his works have been featured in many academic journals and magazines for the general public. In response to the global educational reform, he has developed a new education paradigm, the Global Morphosis Paradigm, which has been implemented at the American Community Schools of Athens, Greece for the past decade. Morphosis of the Youth sets the foundation for peace, which is featured in the 2016 special issue of the magazine, The Economist. Dr. Galamas, welcome to New York, and congratulations on all the wonderful things you're doing for education and helping the new generations sustain excellence and leadership. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I think I can say with all confidence I brought a beautiful weather from yes, Greece you did. <laughs> because today it, it's so wonderful, and thank you for the kind words. Um, actually, uh, for us as edu educators, the only reason that we exist is educating our new generation of leaders. And because we see today that one element is missing around the world, that's ethos or ethical discipline, so it is our responsibility to prepare tomorrow leaders with ethos. This is wonderful because I'm sure you've you know, lived in the United States, you, you, you have experienced the American educational system and of course, you're continuing the American educational system in Greece, but also with a twist of a Greek educational system. And I'm sure you see the differences. Let's begin by telling our audience a little bit more about the American Community School, its inception, and where it is today. Well, it's interesting that the American Community School of Athens was established for British soldiers uh, right away after the Second World War. So this year, we're celebrating 70 years of existing. So the American Community Schools of Athens, which is an English-speaking institution, existed all over the turmoils of the last 70 years in Greece, from democracy to dictatorship with challenges. So today, the American Community Schools of Athens has about 35% American citizens, has about 25% uh, Greek citizens of American descent, or vice versa. Uh, and then has some Greek nationals who find that the best education really for 21st century is education that is based in two pillars. The first one is the ancient Greek philosophy, morphosy, and second with the American education philosophy principles and values. So it is indeed that putting together an amalgamation of two of the best educational philosophies in the world. Tell us about your teaching uh, staff. Well, we have 98% uh, of our teaching staff are from the United States, either Americans or Americans of Greek descent or Greek Americans, whatever terminology is, in, in, is appropriate in the 21st century. And only we have Greek national teachers who are teaching the Greek language. Because what we do is we offer a global education experience to our students enhanced by the local culture. So all of the kids, whether they're Chinese, whether they're uh, Japanese or, or Koreans or Americans, all of them from the first grade of elementary school, they have to take the Greek language. And actually, we are, I can say, as an American educational school in Greece, we teach in our high school, Kavafi and Eliti, where the actual Greek schools, they don't teach anymore because the, the difference is that we believe philosophically that what Aristotle talked about, Aristia, we implement the Aristia. We not have lip service. We're really implementing it, but clarifying all of the goals as the American education philosophy pertains and demands. This is fantastic. I mean, I know a lot of uh, your students and uh, a lot of my friends uh, send their children to your school and they are just so well-rounded and they get, then they come to the United States and, and for their uh, of course uh, continued education in college. Tell us about what the school does to uh, help children kind of uh, experience also American colleges or where, where do they go after mm -hmm. they, they graduate? Well because 
uh, our main stream of educating our students is morphosis, which means morphono. That means molding, shaping, shaping the character of the student, but also shaping the decision making. It's not any more important to remember dates and remember formulas because you can have Google doing this job for you. But what is important is how you utilize all this information to make appropriate decisions. So that philosophical aspect that is missing not only from Greece, but is missing from the Western world, we are promoting and also have in our interest that our students, they become architects of their own learning. As you and I have a different shoe size of shoes, then everyone learns in a different way. And everyone has a different talent and a different interest. So we don't want all of the kids to become doctors and architects. We want them to become philosophers. We want them to become dancers. We want to become mathematicians. It doesn't matter. But in order to do that, we have the same common denominator. That common denominator has three things. First of all, we have to motivate you to love learning. If you don't love learning, then you're not going to go anywhere. So that's number one. Number two, we have to be the example. I can ask my students to be ethical if I'm not ethical. So second one is you have to lead by example. And the third one is innovation. Innovation, innovation. We can't teach our kids today the same way that my teacher taught me. This is unbelievable what is happening today in the Western world. So therefore, what we say, let's find out how the new generation of digital natives, they actually learn. Because I'm an immigrant in the digital environment. Okay, because I did, when I was working with my PhD, with a typewriter. These are natives. So we can't teach them the same way that I learn. So that means, where do we take dogs to teach the mathematics? Where we're going to need to go outside and harvest some olive oil, olive to, to create olive oil, or we go to an island to help refugees. This is the real morphosis. This is the real shaping up the character. That's what we are promoting for the last 10 years. And now we see the fruits. And this is so sweet because we see that our graduates are welcome in any university in the world. 97% last year of our graduates, they got into the first choice university. And, and let me, let me uh, explain to that. If the first choice university is a small liberal arts college, Bard College, let it be. If the first choice is Harvard or Yale, we'll help you. But we're not going to play any illusionary game. If you don't have what it takes to go to the Yales and the Harvards and so forth, we're not going to play any games. We have to be honest to ourselves. Tell us a little bit more about the Morphosis program and all these wonderful learning programs that differentiates the American Community School from other high schools. The Global Morphosis paradigm has three pillars. The first one is the educational philosophy which means the curriculum, which means the curriculum is recent, it's, it's meaningful to the students, and it is related to today's reality. The second one is the teaching methodology. Some of us, we like to learn midnight. Some others at 6 o'clock. So therefore, what we do, our courses are offered in a hybrid form. We call it I-square flex. So, if you want in 1 o'clock in the morning to solve an equation, God bless you. So you solve the equation and you send this equation online to your teacher. If you did all the work, so you don't have to be 9 o'clock in the class, you can come 9.30. Or you can go to the math studio and do an experiment. So the teaching methodology, it's not the teaching methodology that ancestors, they thought it was the best way. It's what you learn best. The third one is the leadership. And that makes a huge difference. Leadership is very important for innovation. I tell to all of the administrators, spy on your faculty to figure out when they do something right. <laughs> and then go and celebrate. 
And when they made a mistake, go and hug them and say, that's okay. Next time, we'll be successful. So leadership, which means that it is collective, it is leadership as a partnership, and the leader doesn't want to go to the top of the mountain so everybody can see that he's a leader, but goes in the top of the mountain so he can see or she can see the whole view to help the others to come up. Tell me what the American Community School does to pave the way uh, to college. Well, we start from Do you early. help them place in college? We, first of all, we start at an early age to identify what are their talents and what are their interests. You know, the saying is that always I joke with parents, they come and they say, well, I want my Johnny to become an architect. And I say, does Johnny know about that? No, no, no. It's not your life. It's the life of your child. So from early ages, from the elementary school, we figure out what Johnny likes, what is his or her strength. Then we help molding that. As we move on, we give them opportunities to grow. So some kids are mathematically inclined. Fourth grader kid is taking the John Hopkins University program and takes ninth and tenth grade mathematics. On the other hand, we have a kid that loves poetry. So we have a little kid writing poems. So we start from the early age. When they go to middle school, we start in a formal way to create the personal portfolio. So we're not waiting until your senior year to become really obnoxious trying to figure out uh, elements for your portfolio. You accumulate that. Mm -hmm. So when they come, deans from these universities, and they say, wow, tell us something about Yana. Yana has a whole portfolio. I said, here what I did in fifth grade, here what I did in sixth grade, here are my ex e exams. So they are attracting our students. Yep. Every year we have between 60 to 70 decision makers like deans or, or associate provosts from American universities. They take the plane that they come to Athens to meet our kids. Mm -hmm. That's, so the placement of a good university, it's not the goal. It's a byproduct of the morphosis of our children. Having experienced uh, the Western uh, educational system and now bringing a portion of it to Greece and, and a portion of Greece into your system, hence the Morphosis program, uh, how would you compare the educational systems? What are the positives? What are the negatives? It's, it's, it's very interesting um, uh, to tell also in, a, also in a different level. When I was in the university, we always were blaming the K-12 environment that they didn't prepare well the students to come to the university. Well, when I left the university and I went down to the K-12, I realized that these, these professors at the university or the deans of the program, they had no idea how to motivate the teachers to become really educators. So therefore, we looked this very interesting gap between their higher education and the K-12 education. If you want to add in this complication is that in the United States, we don't have one education system. We have multiple education system. You have kids who graduate from high schools in inner cities, and they don't even know how to add two digits. And you have kids that they graduate from the flamboyant private schools in the United States, and they're ready to be almost seniors in the university. Right. So. In it's a big gap. It's a big gap. In the United States, not anymore who has and who doesn't have. Is this a failure within the educational system of yes. the United States to be able to balance? Is this a failure of uh, different levels of society? What do, what do you think the result of this gap is from? The result of this gap is that the American universities over the last 50 years, they had a monopoly of attracting brains around the world. So therefore, the Yales and the Harvards and the MITs and the University of Chicago they didn't really care to see the inner cities or other high schools they're producing exceptionally good students. They can get it from Greece, they can get it from Japan, you can go from Germany and so forth. So it was an easy way out. Mm -hmm. So why worry about creating, that takes a lot of time, creating your leaders, you can buy them.
offering all of this opportunity. That's why people like me came for graduate studies in the United States. Well, things changed. Europeans are not coming anymore by hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands in the United States. So what happens? Who are coming in the United States? They're coming from Asia. You go to Berkeley now and 52% are Asians. That's true. They're changing the culture of the institution. They're not participating in societal issues. And they're coming with a different culture, which means memorization, discipline to death, and not creativity. Correct. So now, what we're absorbing, do, and they're, that's a, exactly they're just uh, memorizing. Memorize. And now we go to Greece, where what we did is the following: we forgot the middle sixty percent of our students. The top five percent, they can do wonderful. You can throw them to, to jail, and they can still become, you know, doctors and mathematicians, or to the jungle. Doesn't matter. But what happens to the big? 80, 80 percent, we're, we're missing them, we're losing them, we're not doing anything about that. And that's why they cannot think creatively, they cannot be really meaningful in their lives, and that's why we're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. We have in Greece, the, the Greek national system is really in a big challenge, because what is happening is that we're not adjusting to the 21st century, we actually were going backwards. So therefore, what an institution like American Community School of Athens has as a responsibility, our responsibility is to promote our beliefs and our results, to share, and as we speak, I'm delighted that two of, of members of teams, they are in two different schools, that they're trying to help them set up an optimal learning program, a program where they can be innovating in teaching mathematics without any obligation, without any commitment from their part, because we believe that's the best way. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is our responsibility to make sure that we share the new knowledge that we create in our institution with the general public, with the global institutions, and also with the Greek uh, national uh, institutions. And the epiphany of all this is that in, in April 21st and 22nd. I was going to say, how does ACS sustain their uh, excellence? And, <laughs> and it's, it's one thing that we can brag for ourselves and say we're the best of the world. That's good, but that's, that's not appropriate. The appropriate element is come a third party to say what you are doing, this is meaningful. The third party is accreditation agencies. We are accredited by the Middle States Accreditation Agency in the United States that accredit universities such as Drexel University, UPenn, and so forth, that after evaluated us said, by the way, you are performing at the excellence level, period. That's nothing to discuss. We have the standards, the students over the 10 years, but can you sustain that? So the last three and a half years, all of our community, our faculty, our administrators, the university that we have uh, agreements, we are occupied in doing research. How can we sustain our 95 to 97 percent best fit placement in the universities with the current characteristics of our student body and our teaching methodologies the faculty development. The results of this research is going to be shared with the world the 21st and 22nd of April in our campus. We broadcast live. They're going to become uh, presidents of American universities and international universities to actually see what is the new result of this research. And to finalize this, we were approached, and actually we start two years writing a book, uh, on, on that element, and, and the book is going to be ready before the end of August, which includes all of the results of the research. What is, for me, delightful is that I refuse to believe that new knowledge only is produced in the universities, and the elementary school teachers and the middle school teachers and the high school teachers, they cannot do that. We proved that we were right, and we have authors of research 
results first grade teachers, third grade teachers, and high school teachers. Dr. Yalama, this is wonderful, and congratulations on all these wonderful, uh, great strides that uh, your uh, institution is taking uh, uh, under your leadership. It's wonderful, and, and I'm sure uh, the educational community is recognizing this, and you are offering them uh, different methods for educational programming. I would like to discuss and just touch upon uh, the topic of what is going on with today's society in Greece and the new generation uh, in light of all the economic crisis. I mean, it's going on for many, many years now. What are your thoughts on what the future of the new generation of Greece is looking towards? Well, first of all, I'll start with a statement I made about a year and a half ago and, and really created some very interesting uh, responses. I don't believe we have an economic crisis in Greece. We have an ethical crisis. The money that, that came from the Euro European Union to Greece, actually no one is disputing that the money went to Greek soil. The problem is what happened to this money. So instead of this money used for development of of uh, the new generation, research, infrastructure. It went to few people, corrupted people. So therefore, what happens, money came into Greece and faster than they came in, went out. So that's the first fact. The second fact is that, as a result, we did the easy way. What was the easy way? We deprived the general public from three things. The first one is healthcare. The second one is security. But the third one is education. What we offer to our new generation, it's not an education. We're offering the same kind of learning opportunities that existed 50, 60 years ago. And that's where today young people cannot dream. We have young people who vandalize properties, who are going and taking drugs for only one reason they cannot dream. And they're trying to escape. And they're trying to escape from that. You know, we, we, we adopted a, a public school. I want to, to, to give the name of the public school. And they come once a month to our, to our school, and they spend their time. Last year, we finished the program. I asked the kids, tell me what is the number one element that really you see at ACS Athens and don't see at your school? They said, people care about us. They didn't talk about the gyms, the technology. Say they cared about us. I said, what do you mean? He says, first of all, I walk into the classroom and the teacher cares. Do I know or I don't know? Do I care about what I'm going to do tomorrow? Do I take care of myself? More attention. More attention to me. So therefore, they said, I can dream. But most important, they felt that somebody was believing that they, in them. And that's the problem. When I see 16 and 15 year old kids who use inappropriate language, who abuse, whether they're dogs or whether they're other people, or they go to a soccer game and abuse the chairs, this is a screaming. They say, please pay attention to us. And because we're accepting also some Greek nationals, we see the results that kids that are probably they were labeled that they couldn't do anything in their lives they came to this environment and they're flourishing it's wonderful this is the biggest that's wonderful i would say the biggest happiness that we can get by seeing young kids smile and because of that we allow the students to be leaders so about two weeks ago they came the student government from our school and they say all right we gave food we gave clothes to the refugees can we do something about the kids and we went and we presented a proposal to the governor of Atiki which we say we as his Athens we will take 92 kids refugee kids from three refugee camps to come for six Saturdays so we can work and help them to be integrated in the society. That's wonderful. To teach them. Those are amazing because initiatives. Think about that. If someone is 14 years old 
and doesn't speak the language, doesn't have any skills, what are the options? Steal? Yes. Sell drugs? Or others? It goes back to what you began with, ethos. ethos. And this needs to be taught to all children. You also uh, offer a lot of opportunities for foreign exchange. Would you like to share some of these uh, opportunities with our Greek American audience? Well, actually, it's, it's very interesting. I'm going to meet the family in, in, uh, in Southern California that they brought three boys for one semester to stay at SES Athens because they wanted to see how this is possible for a third. These are third generation Greek Americans, right? So they brought the boys, fourth grade, sixth grade, and eighth grade to spend a whole semester with us. And they're delighted because a couple of things happen. A, they have a sense, in a safety net, a sense, what is Greece, number one. Number two, to learn Greek, to learn humanities, to learn the history, but all in an American environment. So now they're back in California, rich in educational you know, experiences. So that's one semester Cross program. Cross-cultural experiences, yeah. absolutely. So we have one semester program. We have uh, some others that they left the kids for a year with us. Mm -hmm. And all of them stay in families, so no doors. So therefore, you get also the day-to-day. -day. So if you live in a beautiful house, and now you are in the United States, now you're in Greece, you live in an apartment. <laughs> OK, so that's enough. Then we have also programs for the short period of time because we know it's not possible for everyone. So we have summer programs, humanities, or programs where they come and, uh, and they can learn Greek, they can learn the history. So we have a two to three weeks programs for the summertime. And the latest but more sophisticated is this. We combine hybrid learning. So four weeks online learning about Greece and humanities and culture when they are in the United States, and then they come for an experiential learning in the grounds of Olympia, the grounds of, of, you know, of, of Athens and Parthenon. So this is the latest one, which, is, which for me is exciting because they go online, they prepare themselves, and then they come to Greece, and they come after the graduation of their schools or after the finishing the school in June of 1819, and then they spend three weeks in Greece, but not in Athens only, one week in Athens, then you go to Thessaloniki, then we go into Peloponnesus. And, and this is, for me, the, the richest program. Absolutely. And they can go to the website, anyone who is interested. We have one of the most sophisticated websites, and they can see all of that. Wonderful opportunities. Take advantage of them. I wish I had them when I was growing up. And you also offer job opportunities to Greek American uh, certified teachers. Would you like to talk to us yes. about that? Well, that's one other part of, of my presence in the United States. Uh, what we want, because uh, as I said, uh, we have a wonderful opportunities for, for Americans of Greek descent or Greek Americans to come and teach at ACS Athens or even be principal uh, for one of the uh, schools. In fact, uh, last year, uh, we were able to recruit from Kansas an American of Greek descent to become a principal. Uh, up 90 percent of our, of our uh, teachers are U.S. hired. The beautiful element of this is the following. There is a bilateral agreement between Greece and the United States. The first three years, anyone who works at SES Athens is tax-free in both countries. Oh, so that's all the an salary goes to the all the salary goes to the, po in the in the pocket. And then the, the first five years, you pay uh, FICA, Social Security. So, so therefore, you continue with all the benefits in the United States. So it's a wonderful, wonderful Great opportunity, opportunity, guys. Teachers that are interested in teaching in Greece, learning more about your culture, Greek Americans, that have an American uh, uh, yes. teaching uh, certificate, certificate, state certificate, please reach out to the American Community School of Athens. The information is on our screen as we speak. Uh, and take advantage of this wonderful career experience. Dr. Galamas, you're doing wonderful things, making great strides. You are breeding leaders. You are uh, creating innovation within the educational system. Congratulations. We're very proud. You are Greek, uh, and you are promoting and preserving Hellenism as well. Uh, within a Western kind of way in Athens, Greece, amongst your students and your institution. Congratulations to the American Community School. 
We would love to learn more about it. Keep us posted on Thank everything you. you're doing. But the, the actually, the congratulations goes to the faculty, first of all, because these are really down in the trenches and they're making the difference. Then goes to the administrators, and I'm the person who only gets the glory. They're working very hard, they're making the, all of this, and I'm just one of them. Congratulations to you and your faculty and to the whole American Community School Institution. Congratulations. Thank you.